It's rap o'clock. Shout out to Tova. We actually won't be reacting to um rap today. We're going to be reacting to the Star Spangled Banner as you've never heard it before. Um, So this all came about because in multiple political songs, I have said that um, I basically have def defended the right to kneel for the flag. And to me, I think that it is a very American thing to do. Others think that it's directly disrespecting the military that died for our rights. But I think that it's actually honoring them because they died for rights and equality, which a lot of people feel like they haven't achieved. We haven't achieved fully, which is why they are kneeling and protesting in the first place to further that um, modern day civil civil rights. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, people tend to get really angry about that with me, but that's my opinion. I respect your guys' opinion. I understand why you could perceive it as being disrespectful, but I I just don't. I I perceive it as being patriotic and doing what America was made to do and that's to uh, continue to evolve change and reach equality and freedom for everyone uh, don't get too mad y'all if this doesn't change my mind Tova said she was not trying to change my mind she just said she just uh, she thinks that it could help me understand why people feel so passionately about it and that shouldn't harm anything, right? <clears throat> I owe you guys that for sticking around. So, much love to y'all. Let's rock. There was a lawyer once. His name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song that I'm sure you're aware of. You've seen it. It's in most hymnals throughout our churches. It's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game. We stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song. And they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Because of this conflict and the protractedness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. And he said, men, I've got news for you tonight. You're free. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. It won't matter. Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. 
And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. About 1,600. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that. It was about 600 at that time, and we had 16. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of... I had a debate about some of the events in the War of 1812 not too long ago. That's why I know that. Uh, so I did a decent amount of research on this war recently. The he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. He says, it's predominantly... It looks cool as hell. He said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. And he said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. And we'll know that they've surrendered. And you'll now be under British rule. Francis Scott Key went down below and told the intense music. Bong, bong. Oh, what the heck did I just do? What did I just? Closer. Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, "Men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch." As twilight began to fall, and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset. So he wrote this. So he wrote this while on the British ships in the fleet that was shooting at the fort. That's crazy. What a crazy perspective to see your where you live and where your people are getting shot up, and you're on the ship with the people that are orchestrating the entire thing. Well, that's got to be a helpless feeling. He says the sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. And he says from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners, saying was, Tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling. Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. Yeah, no, he wave. said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. Ah, nice. uh, that's where that super famous quote came from. I did not know that. Or did, I mean, the, the preacher could be paraphrasing too that. But I wonder if it actually originated from this story or if he just used the saying in this story to um, basically describe what he said, paraphrase it in a different way. The Admiral said, we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. We don't understand that. But he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott Key said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. Hmm. The prayer. God, keep that flag flying. 
where we last saw it. Sunrise came. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag, completely nondescript, in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a crazy angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he'd found had happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen, but men, fathers, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground, although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up humanly until they died. Hmm. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were Patriots' bodies. Yikes. Yeah, that's song. intense. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Or the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Hmm. Oh say does that star-spangled banner yet fly and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. It is a powerful story, the Amy. The debt was demanded. The price, it was paid. Hmm. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes? And bright stars hmm. through the yeah, that's intense. Fight for the ramparts we watch. We're so what's with the choppiness, bro? Fire. 
Yeah, so the reason why that battle was so important is just because it was the last time Britain ever tr ever tried to press us, right? It's an epic story. Okay, yeah, I see why people are upset. People associate that flag with all those people. Well, I that was fire. Yeah, so the reason why that battle was so important is just because it was the last time Britain ever tr ever tried to press us, right? It's an epic story. Okay, yeah, I see why people are upset. People associate that flag with all those people. Well, obviously, lots of people have fought for our freedoms afterwards, after that too, and died for it. But um, yeah, I get it. I still feel. I still feel the same way, guys. Um, but I, I hope you guys respect that. I respect I respect your guys' opinion. But to me, uh, to me, like the the slaves war and the abolitionist war still wasn't over. In fact, in the original song was actually called the defense of N M Hen Fort Henry, and then uh. It had an entire second verse that was basically a death threat to any slaves that escaped because at the time, ever since the Revolutionary War, actually, the Brits had an open invitation to any slaves that escaped and joined them and fought against the Americans, I think, uh, around 100,000. So 25% of the slaves got away uh, during the Revolutionary War and 5,000 in the War of 1812, mainly Maryland and Virginia, they were hitting all those plantations and they devastated their economy. They were just, they took all the tobacco and all the, basically all the um, valuable crops. And when they went there, the slaves joined them, a chance to fight for their freedom. Basically, they went there, you know what I'm saying, bullied looted and sacked everything and then they were like yo if you guys want to be free come with us and um that's how some of the first free free black people that that were uh african americans came about was they escaped and fought with them and went to canada so it just it just doesn't hit like i said i see i see america through a different lens i see it through the lens of black person a mixed person right so like uh to me um the more important well not more important but the what i really care about in the history that makes me really proud to be american especially is uh like uh the crazy stories about the underground railroad people risking their lives to help each other the abolitionists you know what i mean and the, the civil rights movement all that but yeah, and obviously the Civil War, all the people that marched. Um, it is a powerful, it's a powerful uh, story. I respect it. And I hope you guys respect my opinion that I think you should be able to, have to protest to, to uh, further what we are supposed to have here, which is true freedom and equality. All right, y'all. Peace. Much love, and that's a wrap.